Hey YouTube, welcome back. In this episode today, we are going to put our pinholes into our knife. So if you've watched the other episodes, you've been following along, you know we, uh, in the last episode, we traced out which knife we were going to be making onto our steel. Uh, we used the portaband saw to cut that, uh, the different knives out of the steel. Um, and then we started doing a little bit of profiling and rough grinding to just get, uh, bring, bring the knife shape to life. With these uh, knives that are all finished up now and ready to get um, ready to be marked and get our pinholes drilled in there, uh, with these ones particularly, I did use a surface conditioning belt, um, Scotch Brite surface conditioning belt. They make them in different grits, but really what it does is it helps to just kind of put a smooth finish on there. And I like to do that. Uh, it's not necessary because it's going to be heat treated and then we're going to have to do it all over again. But I like to do it just because I like to see a clean surface and where I'm going to be putting my pins. So that's what we're going to be doing on this episode. We'll be drilling our pins and we'll also be putting our uh, initial grind on it. And then we will, uh, in later episodes, be heat treated and things like that. So let's uh, take a closer look at these and see where we're actually going to be placing our pins. We've got our knives cleaned up here. And now we need to start marking where we're gonna put the pins. Now the great thing is, is I still have our original template. And so I can more or less kind of get an eyeball of where these pins need to be placed. Now mind you, these knives sometimes will change a little bit um, just with grinding. So if it doesn't fit perfectly on your template, the important thing is top to bottom that these match up and that also where your uh, your grind is going to go. So I know that we're going to put a, be putting a pin right here. Okay. So again, I'm just lining this up and then I'm just marking with a Sharpie on these holes right here so that it bleeds through enough that I can see where to be marking it. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do that on all four of these. Okay, so we've got these roughly marked where we're going to be actually putting the pins. I've got the pins picked out right here. This pin, as far as sizing goes, it looks like it's just shy of 11 64ths. So that's probably the drill bit that I will use for that. Um, it, if it's a little bit bigger, it just makes it you know easier to, uh, to fit in there. And then this is the lanyard tube, this is 5 16ths. So this lanyard tube will go in the back here and these pins right here will go into our two pinholes. Oh, bumping the camera here. So before I, uh, before I get on to the next step, I am gonna take a measuring tape and I'm just gonna kind of measure and make sure that everything's lined up because I want these to be consistent and I wanna make sure that they're, they're all even. So um, I'll do that and then we'll come back to uh, looking at uh, drill bits. All right, so our knife is starting to take shape here. We've got our pinholes marked. We've got our lanyard, uh, our lanyard tube marked. And I've also just kind of drawn a, just, a basic, uh, just a basic line for where the handle will go up, just so I can help visualize uh, this knife. Now, the next step is going to be actually drilling these holes into the steel. Now, in the beginning, I was just using whatever drill bits I had laying around. And to be honest with you, the drill bits that I had worked, but uh, it, it was a process. I was having to make, uh, make several attempts at it, use a ton of WD-40 to try to get it through. And when I was done, these drill bits were uh, extremely dull. And so I went on a search for what drill bits are out there that are designed to handle something like this. And after a ton of research, I landed on a company called uh, Drill Hog USA. They are predominantly on eBay. That's, that's mostly where you can find their stuff. They do have stuff on Amazon, uh, but I picked these up on, on eBay. So this is the Drill Hog USA uh, Pig Steel, and that's a proprietary blend. I didn't memorize what the blend is of steel, but I'll put it in a little banner down here at the bottom 
but these basically go from uh, 1 16th inch up to a half inch by 64 ths so you can see in here I've got a full range of drill bits and these are made in America which is great and the, the cool thing about drill hog is that they have a lifetime warranty so if any of these drill bits break uh, you send it in they send you a new one and there's a registration or a serial code right on the inside here of this nice um, steel case and you just register when you get them and these will uh, be registered for a lifetime warranty so there's a 135 degree split on these at the top most drill bits that you'll buy from you know home depot or something like that are 118 degree this is 135 degrees which just helps prevent walking on the blade so when i'm coming down onto the blade i'm not going to get a i'm not going to get the drill bit walking on it um and it just prevents uh you know air so these I'm really, really happy with. I've used them a couple times. We're gonna use them again today, but these were designed, if you look at their eBay listing, these were designed for uh, heavy metal. So steel, uh, stainless steel, um, grade eight bolts. I mean, they, these things will get through stuff. And so this with the combination of a drill doctor, uh, drill bit sharpener, this is my key to success with drilling through these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out the uh, appropriate sizes based off of the lanyard tube and the pin here, and then we will we'll get drilling. So if you know what size your pins are, then you can just pull it right out. I threw away and don't remember, I have pins laying everywhere, so I don't remember what these are. Um, I think the 5 30 seconds is gonna be too small, so we're gonna go with the 1164. So we'll pull out that one. And then this lanyard tube, this brass lanyard tube is still marked with 5 sixteenths. So we'll go down and find our, oh, I pass it, 5 sixteenths. And these are going to be the drill bits that I'm gonna need to do my initial, my initial drills. So for those of you that are wondering, I'm just using a cheap five-speed bench drill from Harbor Freight. I haven't found the need to uh, upgrade this yet. It seems to be working fine. So we're gonna go ahead and take our blank and we're just going to line it up here. And I like to kind of push down on this just to see where my center is gonna be on the drill bit. So I push the drill bit down into the blue little dot that I created, and now I know where my center is. I did buy this little, um, this little like vise, or this little, um, I guess, drill holder here. Whoa, got lights flickering on and off here. That's scary. And then the other thing that I'm gonna be using is I'm gonna be using uh, Tap Magic. This is the EP Extra cutting fluid. Uh, I just put a drop of this on there when I start to lower my drill bit down. It just helps to keep the steel cool and also to lubricate the uh, drill bit uh, to cut through easy. So let's go ahead. So I got that one done. I'll just shift it over. We're gonna do the same thing on this. It's gonna bring it down, mark it so I can see where my center is. I can even use the drill press to kind of hold it in place while I bring my, while I, while I tighten it down. Put a dab of that on there. Perfect. Okay, let's wipe that down. 
we have two nice clean holes. Let's uh, now do the lanyard hole. Okay, so we have our pin holes and our lanyard holes drilled and now we need to put a couple more holes in here and the reason we want to do that is because when we actually go to epoxy the handles onto these and put the pins in we want to give the epoxy um, areas on the tang that they can, that it can settle into to create a really strong bond and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and keep the 5 16th drill bit on the drill on the drill press right now and i'm just going to put a couple more holes um, probably two each right here in the center so that we actually have a little bit more surface area for the epoxy to settle into when we uh, when we go ahead and glue them up okay so we're making some serious progress here we got our four knives now um, cut profiled uh, surface cleaned up and we've just finished drilling our pinholes so our pinholes are the two smaller ones right here and then we have our larger one in the back that's our lanyard hole and then we have our two um, our two uh, additional holes to help the epoxy just kind of settle in there. So what we got to do next is I'm going to um, take just a little uh, tool and clean up these holes. And what I use is I know there's like actually tools for this, but what I actually use is I take uh, this uh, five eighths, uh, I guess, what do you call these? A tapping bit. Um, and I just put it into my hand drill there's nothing fancy about the way that I do this and I just literally just take this and I just hit it for a couple seconds on each side of every hole I'll show you up close what we've done here. So you can see that before we did that, there's a little um, there's a little burr on the on the side of the holes, and they're just not clean. And so after we use that little tool, you can see that we just take that right off, and we just clean it up. And that'll just make it easier later for the pin to slide through. So, so I've moved our blanks now over to my vise here, my bench vise. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint. Um, where we are going to be grinding or where the uh, where the finished edge will be I'm gonna just paint that with this uh, blue steel Dymex and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna have to mark my center line this stuff can withstand very high heat and so you don't run the risk of losing where your center line is as you start grinding um, it dries really quick so we're just gonna do one nice coat on there let that dry and then we will mark our center line. All right, so we've moved inside my house for this next step, um, and we did that for a reason. Um, for scribing the center line, the way that I'm currently doing it, um, I need a really flat surface, and this granite uh, island here uh, is about the flattest surface that I have uh, in my house or out in my garage, so that's what we're gonna be using. Uh, the other reason I came in is because I needed another cup of coffee. So uh, there's a couple different ways that you can scribe the center line. The most precise is to actually use a center line scribing tool. Uh, you can buy those online. I have one on order, but it's not here yet. Uh, that was something I learned about a little bit uh, more, more recently, I should say. And so the way that I was doing it and the way that I saw um, some people do it online and which, what I'm gonna do today is I'm actually going to use a drill bit that is the same uh, thickness as my steel. 
And so this is eighth inch steel, so I'm using an eighth inch uh, drill bit. And basically what I'm gonna do is because the drill bit has a center point, uh, so that when you come down, it can stay centered, um, that little point is what's gonna be used to scribe the center of the knife. So what I will do is I will lay this drill bit flat onto the granite next to my uh, blank, and then I will just pull it across, and the center of this drill bit will scrape into that blue Dimex and will just cut, um, or not cut, but will just scribe a nice center line. So let me bring the camera down here closer so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we have our eighth inch drill bit. We're going to lay it flat. We're going to put our knife blank right up against it. And we are just going to pull nice and even along that. So now you can see I have a center line scribed. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, I guess, here. Let me focus it. Uh, but you can see that I have a center line scribed. And all I need to know is all I, I just need to be able to see that when I'm grinding. So I'll do that with the other ones. Perfect. And last one. That one actually looks a little bit off. So we'll take a second pass at that one. That's better, I'll know that line. Okay, so we've got our knives um, marked, we've got our center, eye, uh, center uh, line scribed. And so now we're gonna get to actually grinding a preliminary edge on it. Now I grind before heat treat, I've been grinding about 80% of the way and then I finish the rest after the heat treat. Uh, but I wanted to talk about just grinding uh, tools um, and ways to grind. Uh, I had a really hard time in the beginning uh, freehanding it. Uh, I w my bevels were always off. And so what I decided to do was to buy a grinding jig. Now there's a hundred different grinding jigs out there, um, but I believe that I found probably the best grinding jig. This is from a guy named Alexander Kitoff. Um, he is from Bulgaria and he has an Etsy store called Kitoff Knives, and I will put a link in a banner down here, and I'll put a link to where you can buy these. But this thing is an absolute piece of work. Um, this is solid steel that he is precision cut. Everything, um, all everything on this is just built to last. Um, you can see in the front here, there's a ton of different holes here, and it comes with all kinds of these different um, these different screws uh, for holding your knife at different angles on this. And then a great thing about this is on the side here, he's actually got a little angle guide on here. So by rotating this center knob here, you can lean this forward or back and you can see exactly what angle you are going to be uh, grinding on. So what you would essentially be end up doing is taking your knife, using some of the screws to uh, lock it into place, set your angle, and then all you would be doing is running it against your sanding belt. And that would put, ensure that you are grinding an even, you have an even grind and that your bevels will stay straight. Now for these knives, particularly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this at a straight 90 degrees and I'm actually gonna angle the platen of my, uh, of my uh, grinder. And I'm going to run, using this, I'm just going to run it across my grinder. So let me get this set up with the knife on there, and then we'll take it over to the grinder. I cannot recommend this piece of equipment enough. So go check out the description um, down, down below, and there'll be a link. He makes different sizes of these too, um, and he ships them from Bulgaria. They're handmade, uh, you know, two year, I think a two year warranty on it all. So very happy, and he was really, really easy to work with. Um, Alexander answered all of my questions and I couldn't be happier with this. So go down and check out the description for a link to where to buy these.
Okay, so we've got the edge um, started now. Um, uh, I, I didn't take this all the way down. Um, you can see it's it's not sharp. Um, I've done about, I don't know, 90, 95% of the grind. Um, and I do that because uh, we're gonna heat treat it and then after we heat treat it, we'll go back and we'll actually finish the grind um, and we will put the, the final edge on it before we start assembling the scales. So that's it for this episode. On this next episode, we're going to be talking about um, putting your maker stamp on there. That's something that's brand new for me. I actually just got um, a stamp for it. There's different ways of doing it, you know, from etching it um, to actually stamping it on there. I went with the cheapest option for me right now since I you know, don't really know what I'm doing and I'm gonna learn along the way. And then we're also gonna be talking about heat treating and the way that I heat treat um, versus the way that some other people heat treat or the way that I would like to eventually start heat treating. Um, so we'll be covering that in the, in the next episode. Hey, if you haven't, uh, go down somewhere under this knife right here. There's a subscribe button. Go down and click subscribe. You'll get notified when I, um, when I post new uh, videos. Love to have you check out and follow this journey with me um, as I continue to learn um, how to make knives. So go down, click like, click subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.